Hi to everybody who uh, just joined. We have um, a couple of our journalists here in the city of St. Louis. Um, Rachel Lipman from Public Radio, Nassim from the Post-Dispatch, Mark Schlinkman from the Post-Dispatch, Jim Merkel from Metro STL, and Brian Byrne, I believe, uh, from KSDK. Uh, so on our call here today, uh, we have uh, Commissioner Charles Ramsey from Teneo Risk. By the way, this is Jacob Long um, from Mayor Krusen's office. I should have introduced myself. Um, and we want to thank uh, Commissioner Ramsey for taking a couple of times, a couple of minutes here today to provide some brief overview, general remarks about the uh, final assessment report that the city received today on SLMPD. So I am going to open it up to him and uh, let people in who may be a little behind. I anticipate we'll spend about 15, 20 minutes here today together. And then one by one, we'll get to you, uh, some, of the, some of the press on the call who have questions after his remarks. So uh, Commissioner Ramsey, I'll open it up to you. Thank you. And good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's good to be here with you uh, today. As you know, we just released, uh, Teneo just released its report on the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Um, the uh, city and the department just got their full copy of the report uh, today. Uh, I don't know if they've had a chance to really go through it thoroughly. I'm sure that uh, they're in the process of doing that now. So I'll just hit a couple of the highlights, but first let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Chuck Ramsey. Uh, my background is in policing. Uh, I started my policing career in my hometown. I'm just up, I 57 from you folks. I'm a native Chicagoan. Uh, I joined the Chicago Police Department in 1968 as an 18 year old police cadet. I spent 30 years as a member of that department. I left in 1998 to take over as police chief in Washington, D.C., where I served for um, almost nine years in that capacity. I did retire briefly in 07, but then at the end of 07, a newly elected mayor of Philadelphia, Michael Nutter, gave me a call and asked if I'd be his police commissioner. And I said, yes, I spent eight years as police commissioner in the city of Philadelphia. I've also uh, had the privilege of serving as president of both the major city chiefs and the police executive research forum. And in 2015, I was selected to uh, co-chair President Obama's task force on 21st century policing. Uh, currently, I'm a member of the monitoring team in uh, both Baltimore and Cleveland. They're both under federal uh, consent decree. So I work for the federal court in both those uh, cities. Um, I'm also an advisor to the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and I currently serve as chair to the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency for Governor uh, Tom Wolf. Um, I'm also right now working as a uh, law enforcement expert for uh, Teneo. I was contracted to take a look at the St. Louis uh, Metropolitan uh, Police Department. Um, as I said before, um, we, we did take a, uh, a look at the uh, uh, police department. And let me start by saying that one of the things that came out very clear during our assessment, uh, the St. Louis Police Department has good police officers and, and, and leaders. I mean, they're committed to serving uh, the city. Uh, we didn't have a single interview that uh, did not reflect that. And I think that's an important thing uh, to note. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities to improve, because there is always opportunities uh, to improve. For an example, um, developing a department-wide uh, crime reduction strategy that includes a community-oriented policing philosophy. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that the department has, you know, is doing nothing to address uh, crime, but it's not as coordinated uh, and strategic as it could be leveraging all the resources that the department has available to it, making sure that everyone is singing from the same sheet of music. That's not uncommon in large police departments. The larger the department, the more people you have, the more units you have, 
But that's why it's so critically important that you have a plan, a strategic plan that everybody understands. They understand their role, they understand their responsibilities. Unfortunately, St. Louis has a long history of um, having a problem with violent crime. And the need is very, very important that the department and the rest of the city government focus on everything they can do to, re uh, to reduce that. Um, the same applies to a communications plan. One of the things we discovered when we were uh, interviewing people within the department as well as externally is, you know, just a real solid communications plan. It really lets people know this is the vision that the chief has. These are the goals that's been set. Here's the plan. Everybody understands it. So you don't have people that kind of have their own idea of what things ought to be and pretty much doing their own thing. Right now, um, th there's not as much coordination, as I said before, um, than it should have. Um, part of their problem in addressing crime is staffing. Uh, they are shorthanded. Uh, anywhere from 120 to 140 officers. Uh, but it's not just the numbers, and I'll get into that just a little bit uh, in, in just a moment. It's also how resources are allocated within the department. And by that, I mean, uh, take districts for an example, the six districts that the department has. The uh, patrol officers are pretty much evenly distributed between those six districts. I mean, in one sense, you can kind of understand that, but in another sense, you know, it, it's not consistent with crime. Crime is not equally distributed across the city. And so when you, re when you, when you uh, uh, allocate resources, you have to take calls for service in, 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 into account, not just calls for service in terms of numbers, but the types of calls uh, that officers are being um, summoned to. Uh, the geography, the population. I mean, there are a lot of variables that go into figuring out uh, staffing. As far as hiring goes, uh, the city uh, right now is uh, primarily responsible or they are responsible for the hiring process. Um, when we interviewed uh, people in the department, uh, the feeling was that the hiring uh, process wasn't necessary. Well, one, it was too slow and two, it really didn't, um, it, 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 the police weren't given priority when you talk to people in the city, of course, they have a different opinion. The two groups need to sit down and need to figure out how they can hire people as quickly as they can, doing the proper backgrounds and so forth. So you're hiring people who really um, um, should be uh, police officers um, and, and being given some priority to that. So staffing is a huge uh, issue. Um, we were very impressed as we spoke with uh, uh, as I said before, the majority of people in the department, including your chief, who is totally committed uh, to improving not only the police department, but making uh, St. Louis a safer place. Um, and so uh, with that, um, let me uh, pause, because I'm sure there are probably a few questions. You already know that uh, Teneo was hired um, by um, the business community, uh, civic prog progress companies, and the St. Louis Regional Business uh, Council. Uh, no taxpayer expense at all. That's who we were hired by, and that's who we did this work for. Um, so with that, um, Jacob, I don't know how you want to handle this from this point on. Uh, I think we're going to open it up to um, some of our friends from the press who have questions, and I'm just going to go down uh, the line here. Uh, and. Uh, Reporter friends, just keep in mind, we've got a limited window of Mr. Ramsey's time and want to be respectful of, of his time. So let's keep our questions uh, concise. And if you hear one that you've already got answered, maybe, maybe move on to another one on your list. Um, first on my list here, I've got uh, Brian Byrne. And if it's the same uh, Brian Byrne, who I know, I believe this is from KSDK, the NBC affiliate here in St. Louis. And I'm trying to Unmute him. Brian, are you unmuted by chance? Oh, let me unmute him. Can you unmute yourself if you got questions? Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Jim Merkel from uh, Metro STL, a local uh, publication. Jim, you got some questions for Commissioner Ramsey? You're on mute, Mr. Merkel. 
You are muted, sir. Yeah, I can see your image there. You're muted. There you go. No, not quite. Muted, but... The icon left, but... Now we can't hear you, Jim. Okay, we're going to keep going down the list. We'll come back, Jim. Uh, I'm going to go now to Mark Schlinkman, who is a reporter with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Mark, can you unmute yourself if you've got uh, questions? Yes. There yep, we go. I can hear you. Okay. Commissioner, uh, I noticed that neither this report or the one you did for St. Louis County recommended the two departments merge into one. Was that seriously considered? And uh, why did you not recommend that? Well, my report, I was assigned to the city itself. There was another team working uh, the county. So my focus was not on merger or anything other than taking a look and assessing the department, its current um, um, structure, its current capacity, um, the plans for addressing crime uh, and disorder. And that was the focus of the city team. And so um, I did not look at, at merger. That was not part of my mission. Do you have any follow-ups, Mark? Well, that was my main question. So it was, well, in terms of the St. Louis City Department, uh, how do you think the 120 to 140 shortfall should be made up? Obviously, uh, the residency change might, might help right. that in the short term, but what other ideas do you have? Well, there's a couple ways. The first is obvious, and that's hiring. Uh, but hiring takes time. Uh, it could take as long as two to three years before you fully realize the staffing. And the reason for that is because as you're hiring, on the other end, you have attrition. And right now, the department averages about 12 officers, anywhere from 10 to 12 officers a month uh, retiring. So you have to make that up plus add on to that. That's why it takes as long as it takes. And that's why it's also important to take a look at what you have now, the resources you currently have, uh, the variety of units, specialized units in particular, uh, to really take a look to see whether or not uh, you'd be better served having some of those officers in the patrol division as opposed to specialized units. Now, it doesn't mean that those units aren't important. They are. But sometimes you simply don't have the luxury of having those units operational at the same time you're that short in um, in patrol. So that's something that's in the report. It's something that I'm sure the chief will take a look at. Um, it may not bring him up to the full number that we're talking about, but it may provide some relief. Because right now, officers really in some districts uh, are really uh, overwhelmed with calls for service, working overtime, and things of that nature. And certainly that's something that can't be sustained for a long period of time. So those two things I believe could provide, uh, well, one could provide some short-term relief. The long-term uh, is really in hiring. But again, that doesn't happen overnight. Okay, we are going to go now to uh, Rachel Lipman. Rachel is a reporter with St. Louis Public Radio, the NPR's affiliate for the St. Louis Metro. Rachel, if you could please unmute yourself. Yes, uh, good afternoon, I guess, where you are and where we are, Commissioner. A uh, question for you. You identified, obviously, there are sort of strategic and communication issues with that strategy. Um, which is sort of the more central concern to you for this department? Is it the lack of strategy at the top, or is it that the officers below simply just don't know what the actual strategy is? Well, I think it's both. I mean, uh, there, there is a there's a plan, but it wasn't well communicated. Uh, when, when the chief was the uh, commander of the 6th District, he had what he called uh, Hayton's Rectangle, uh, which was a geographical area that was overwhelmed with crime, additional resources uh, put there, and, and it did have an impact. When that was uh, expanded citywide, however, it, it, you, you dilute your resources because you're already short-staffed, and so it's not as effective. And you wind up going from you know, crisis to crisis, in a sense. Uh, the other problem I think that uh, 
the, the department faces is one that's cultural as much as it is anything else. And that is, and it was the case when I was in the Chicago Police Department as well. Uh, there's a long history of if anybody calls 911, cops respond. Uh, and so for the most part, uh, there are some opportunities there to offload some of those calls for service that could free up officer time to be more proactive in dealing with crime and disorder problems to engage in community policing and the like. But none of that matters in terms of strategy if the men and women on the, on the street, if the ones that are, that are in the beat cars that are actually working, if they don't understand what their role is in, in, in the plan. Uh, that's why we also mention internal communications because it does have to go from the top down and, and people have to push it through so that everybody knows and everybody is, it understands what it is. And that's not just the districts. It's also the specialized units being mission oriented in, in, in a way in which it's consistent with the overarching strategy and plan that the chief has put in place, if that makes sense. And, and if I can give you an example of what I mean, and this is common in big police departments, and that's all I've ever worked was in big police departments. If you've ever gone to a concert and you get there a little early and the musicians, the orchestra is there and they've taken their seats and they start to tune their instruments, it's just a lot of noise, right? But the minute the conductor comes out and they start to play, it's, they, they come together to form beautiful music. Well, what happens in a police department, you got a lot of people, everybody's working, everybody's trying to do whatever, but it may not be consistent. It may not be that same sheet of music. And so you, if you don't have that kind of coordination, then you'll never be as effective as you, as you possibly could be. That's why strategy is important. That's why communications is important so that everybody understands their role and what they should be doing to reduce crime within the city. Hopefully very quick follow up to that. I know you were only contracted to review the department for a, a period of time, like uh, January, I believe is when you were pulled in. Do you have a sense of how long this has been a concern in terms of the strategy and lack of communication? Um, does it precede this current chief and administration in, in your understanding or estimation based on your from research? The, from the interviews that we've conducted, this doesn't seem to be a new uh, phenomenon. This is something that has been lacking in the department for oh, could have been decades. I won't go that far to say that, but it certainly is not a recent development. And so, um, but again, we didn't find anything that's not fixable. And some of these issues are longstanding, but that doesn't mean they're not fixable because they are fixable. Um, but it's got to start somewhere. And our recommendation is that it start, um, I, I think we have that listed as one of our, our short term or more immediate um, um, recommendations. Thank you, Rachel. I want to try to give our friend, I don't know if he got the audio figured out, Jim Merkel from Metro STL. Did you get your audio figured out? No, it doesn't, doesn't look like it. Sorry, I don't know. something's wrong. Well, he's, the icon is on now for um, mute. So you're definitely muted on your end. Yep. Jacob, could he use okay. the chat function? Oh, there we are. Just, there we are. Oh, that there was we like are. Got you. Yeah, That's go ahead, Jim. Talk about the uh, racial tension within uh, the department and the fact that we we have the fact that we have two uh, uh, we have two organizations representing different people in the department. Well, uh, of course, race is an issue everywhere. It's not unique, certainly, to the St. Louis uh, Police Department. It's throughout our society. It didn't come up as much as I thought it would come up, but it did. It, it did surface in different areas in terms of assignments, particularly to. Uh, specialized units and opportunity for promotion and things of that nature. And that's something that have to take, take a real deep dive in. Now, some of that is contractual because when you look at the current uh, collective bargaining agreement uh, that's in place, for example, assignment to a special unit, uh, what's the skill set, seniority, 
And um, obviously that puts minorities and women at a disadvantage in and of itself. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we have to take a, a, a hard look at. And uh, the city, at the next round of negotiations is gonna have to try to come up with something to relieve that so that there can be more opportunity in terms of mobility within the department, either moving from patrol to a special unit, for an example, or promotion through the ranks or what have you. Uh, but that is certainly a goal. But it, uh, it was not something, even when speaking with the African-American officers, Hispanic and so forth, it came up over and over again, but it is there. It, there's definitely an issue. Um, and I would have been surprised, quite frankly, had it not been an issue is every place I've ever worked, it's been an issue. Jim, did you have a follow-up? No, that's fine. Okay, and then I wanna ask um, Brian Byrne from KSDK, the local NBC, we'd try to start with you. I don't know if you can hear me, if you're there, if you're just recording, but uh, did KSDK Channel 5 have any questions for Commissioner Ramsey? Okay, hearing none, um, I, I think that is going to do it for our time today, Commissioner. Uh, we all want to thank you for your time here this afternoon um, and appreciate the past uh, six months of your time working with us on this outside review. If, do you have any final words or anything else you want to like to leave for us Well, today? Uh, let me just say this. It, it's really been my honor. Uh, to have a chance to work on this team, but also to interact with the men and women of the St. Louis Police Department and uh, Chief Hayden, who I didn't know very well prior to this. I had seen him, but I really didn't know him well, but I, I did, I've come to know him and, 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 and respect him. Um, you know, I, I have a long history with St. Louis. Uh, when I grew up as a kid in Chicago, my favorite aunt and uncle lived in St. Louis. And so, uh, we used to drive down every summer uh, to spend a couple weeks with them in St. Louis. And to kind of give away a little bit about my age, I remember when the arch was being built. So I do, <laughs> so it goes back uh, uh, a little ways. But that, every time I think of St. Louis, I think of them. And so it has a fond uh, place, uh, fond memories uh, for me. Um, you have some issues there. There's absolutely no question about it, and primarily it's crime. There is no reason why St. Louis cannot turn it around. They can turn it around. But it's not going to be just on the shoulders of the police department. It's going to take everybody, including community folks, in order to make that happen. But folks have to get, everybody has to get deadly serious about this because it's a deadly problem that you're facing. When I took over Washington, D.C. in the 90s, we were considered the murder capital of the United States. And anybody who knows anything about DC in the 90s knows that that was not an exaggeration. They're nowhere near the top 25 now in terms of violent crime. It can happen, but it's not gonna happen overnight. And you see a difference, it ain't happening. But it doesn't mean that the work can't start now. And, if, and, and with time, patience and effort, Believe me, St. Louis will lose that label that none of you and none of us want to ever see and become a place that everybody is proud of and visitors want to come. Businesses thrive and people in the community can enjoy their neighborhood. Kids can play and all those kinds of things. This is all possible, but it's going to take a, a, a it's going to be a heavy lift, but it's one worth making. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, be here today, but also to work along uh, with you. And um, I'm always available if you need anything else. So thank you all. And God bless everybody. Enjoy the holidays. Please stay safe. Keep wearing that mask. Thank you, Commissioner Ramsey. You are free to go if you've got okay. uh, something else on your plate. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, Rachel, you had asked me um, about a question for, for Chief Hayden. We do have Chief Hayden on the Zoom, I believe. Uh, so uh, Rachel. Yeah. Can you hear me, Rachel? Yep, there's the chief. Rachel, Rachel go ahead. Uh, I mean, this question is both for Chief Hayden or for Director Edwards. Um, uh, just kind of getting your reaction to what this report said and sort of based on the, the findings and the recommendations, what the next steps for the department are to, to implement some of these recommendations and changes. 
Surely so. Uh, I think one of the overarching, as, as uh, Chief Ramsey mentioned, one of the overarching concerns is our crime strategy as well as the communication for that strategy, strategy up and down the chain of command. Um, I noticed that the, uh, the recommendations included, uh, the, the immediate ones included for the first three months or the next three months, whatever. So clearly uh, amongst the first things we'll do is to uh, look at our, our crime strategy. It has evolved, uh, you know, our original um, uh, rectangle strategy has evolved into some mission zones. And so clearly um, if that's not communicated up and down the chain of command, in a very clear way, then that certainly could be, um, that could make for that assessment to be legitimate. And so um, I, I appreciate the feedback. And um, those are, that's, that'll be among the, amongst the first things that we work on um, uh, first quarter of the year. How will implementing the recommendations do you think be impacted by the fact that the mayoral administration is going to change in April? Uh, this, I guess, would be a question either for you, Chief, or for Director Edwards. Um, you know, we know that there is a possibility leadership will look different of the St. Louis Police Department. And I'm wondering how that may play out in terms of implementing some of these recommendations. I, I certainly believe that the recommendations are, are solid across, uh, you know, across many ways. And so uh, it really shouldn't matter, in other words, who the mayor is to, to implement something that's actually uh, a legitimate assessment. Uh, so, so in other words, it, it shouldn't matter uh, the change of administration, I think that many other recommendations are legitimate and well-founded. And so we'll be imp implementing as many as we can, as soon as we can. And Rachel, one of the uh, purpose uh, of the uh, report is to assist us in the reduction uh, of violent crime. And so irrespective of who's uh, in charge of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, uh, that should be uh, uh, what we all want and what we all strive uh, to uh, to get here. So uh, this these recommendations are recommendations that we certainly welcome. Uh, we we want to be better, and uh, uh, we will take a hard look, a very careful look at all of the recommendations uh, that have been made, and those that we can implement. We'll try to get those implemented as quickly as possible. Okay. Then rounding out here, uh, I want to give Mark and then Jim the opportunity. Maybe Rachel stole your questions, you guys, but. Uh, Mark Schlinkman, if you could unmute yourself, do you have anything for either Director Edwards or Chief Hayden today? Uh, Director Edwards, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, good. Uh, this isn't directly related, but there were rumors going around a few weeks ago, you were considering running for mayor yourself. Then I've heard lately, more lately, no, you're not. I, I just wanted to hear it from you. Did you consider running and did you decide against it? Or are you looking at it or what, what's the situation? Uh, being a politician is a profession. Uh, and uh, I uh, just don't have the, the um, inspiration nor the aspiration uh, to be uh, the mayor of the city of St. Louis. It is a wonderful, wonderful city. Uh, I certainly applaud our current mayor and I applaud anyone uh, that uh, is prepared to govern. Uh, it is very difficult to govern. Uh, uh, I respect those people that, uh, that are willing to do that job. Uh, I just simply have no uh, aspirations uh, to be mayor of the city of St. Louis. Did did you take a look at doing it, uh, at running or not? You, you know what, I, I I did not take a serious look at at, uh, at uh, running uh, for mayor. Uh, I uh, uh, am just really uh, 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 the type of person uh, that uh, uh, think that I can get the job done without having to be on the forefront of uh, governing our city. Okay, Jim uh, Merkel, last one. Do you have questions about the report for, for Judge Edwards or Commissioner Hayden? If you want to unmute yourself, Mr. Merkel. No, thank you. Okay, well, it's exactly 1.30. Look how that worked out. So thanks all for being here today. Uh, let us know if you have any other questions. And we do have Live with Lida at 2 p.m. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.